Surprise from a player standpoint uh, in receiving. They're about 28th in receiving, which is not very good. Uh, 215 yards a game. Some guys do that single-handedly. Yep. We're talking about a team as far as every game. So an explosive player you take away from your football team, a guy who's heavily involved in your offense, being reverse, jet sweep, kickoff return, Super Bowl big-time return. So very surprised from that aspect of we're getting rid of, rid of one of our explosive players on our team to help our running game, to allow our quarterback to make those great decisions, to have some kind of, kind of trickeration to our offense. So very surprised from that standpoint. But after learning about the locker room dynamics and what, what Pete Carroll's trying to do and what you have in Seattle and you kind of have this bond of brotherhood, yeah. not surprised at all. After hear about fighting before the Super Bowl and having guys have to break it up, verbal arguments, never being inside the group. That is a very, very, a, a, any locker room is a locker room, a, a place where you want to be able to go and unwind, kind of let loose and get away from things. But when you go to the locker room and there's that kind of tension with this kind of football team, what Pete mm -hmm. is trying to do, th there's just no room for it. And that's why it was, it doesn't matter who you get back, mm -hmm. draft picks or players. So an in initial uh, news, very surprised. Man, how can you get rid of an explosive player like that? Man, this is what this league is about, making big time plays. But after hearing about the locker room dynamics, I wasn't surprised at all. Stephen A. I don't cover the Seattle Seahawks. You can only go by what you hear. Mm -hmm. But I get the impression that Percy Harvin has gotten screwed over. Mm. <clears throat> and the reason why I feel that way is because I got a real problem. It's just my own personal thing. I can understand and anybody that would respectfully disagree with me. I got a real problem when, you know, somebody's a locker room problem. You didn't hear much about it. You let him go. How does he find out when he's en route to the team bus and you call him off? You know, I got something to tell you. You see the way that was handled. Don't like that. You see all the problems that Seattle had in terms of suspensions with PED use and things of that nature in the last couple of seasons. Very little was said. But somehow Percy Harvin gets traded and I'm seeing people on TV. This brother got anger management issues? Really? All I'm saying is, is that that's not us wanting to get rid of a player. That's us wanting to tarnish and sully this dude's career. Mm. Because in the immediate aftermath of his departure from Seattle, what we heard was this could very well be his last chance. Minnesota, yep. problems. Mm -hmm. Seattle, problems. This is it. He's in New York. Well, why is that? No, they did not win the Super Bowl because of Percy Harvin because they got there without him because he was injured but came back in the Super Bowl and played lights out, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. You know, with, with his punt return for a touchdown kickoff return. Bottom line is, is that we also looked at him this year and saw how electrifying he could be, so his talent is unquestioned. In no way am I trying to absolve Percy Harvin, Eric Skip. I'm not trying to do that. What I'm simply saying is, is that why are we hearing about this stuff now? And the kind of stuff that we're hearing about, it makes me uncomfortable because your problem might be somebody else's solution. How come you can't just let it be their solution? Mm -hmm. I got a problem with that. And anger management issues? That really rubbed me the wrong way. I'll just this leave it at that. Smack just a little bit of what happened to Deshaun in Philadelphia. Sure. Deshaun Jackson to Washington. Sure. Right. Sure. Similar, where in in his wake, he is vilified, mm -hmm. and you wonder why. Mm -hmm. And in this case, Eric, I don't want to pile on here, but mm -hmm. I'm with Stephen A. on this. The Seahawks, and, and you agree with this part of it, they are dearly going to miss. This player. Without a doubt. He is an electric game changer, irreplaceable. And when I look back at his track record, he played in three high school state championship games, and I'm pretty sure he, he got those teams to that game. Uh -huh. They did win one of them. And then at Florida, he plays in two national championship games, and the one against my Oklahoma Sooners in the fourth quarter, he and Tim Tebow Tremendous. combined, but he just took the game over. It was a lot of Percy Harvin. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's just too good. 
And then his rookie year, he's the offensive rookie of the year in the National Football League. And that was a Brett Favre team that got all the way to the NFC Championship game at New Orleans. Yeah. I'm sure Percy had a little something to do with that one. Mm -hmm. And then we know the numbers he put up just, just in like three plays, three touches of the football in this last Super Bowl, 43 to 8. Mm -hmm. That really happened. Yeah, that happened. It happened. <laughs> it's hard to believe after what we saw last night. It, it happened. It happened. It did. It was talking and, and Percy Harvin changed that football game. Yeah. And the reason I picked Seattle this year, I kept saying my big X factor is this little man. Because I, I got to tell you, for all the problems, and, we, and again, I'm with you. I don't cover the team either. I've read all the dirty laundry problems, all the incidents, mm -hmm. all the problems that made him more trouble than he's worth. But you tell me, every time he touched the football, yeah. even this year, did he not run like crazy oh, hard with it? it like crazy no hard. It. There's no doubt about yeah, it. Like, it, like it, be it, careful. It, like, be careful. You're going to blow yourself off. Yeah. But hard Eric, it, production it, equals value. So it you, does. You, be, you being in a locker room, you being a former player, why does this, why again, for us is it hard for us to understand? And it's hard for me to understand. And you don't like it, but it happens because the dynamics in a locker room, you have to find a way to have stability in the locker room. I, I played with Keith Jackson, tight end from Oklahoma. Great player, great player. It's just the locker room dynamics is as much leadership as we had in the locker room. It just wasn't a good fit for Keith. So he wanted to leave. And it was just, hey, you know what? I'm gone. But Percy didn't it's, want to leave. You know, but, but again, it's about protecting the 52 other guys and making sure that you have consistency in that locker room. So when you come through that locker room, you feel at ease. You feel like, you know what, there's nothing we can't overcome. So again, I think it's going to be a huge loss. And we have to really look at this weeks later and see, you know, where's the explosion that's going to come from for this football team? Is there going to be more pressure put on the running game or the quarterback? But again, it, and that's what it is. What, what, and that's what it go is. Go ahead, go ahead. If you're going to let Percy Harvin go, mm -hmm. is there something else that could have been said about him? Well, I don't think you should say anything about it. Exactly. I mean, do you have to label him that way? I, Deshaun Jackson, we clearly look at the Philadelphia Eagles, and they are clearly not the same team without Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, exactly. Even though they're winning football games, that deep threat that the they had. The explosion is not there. I mean, there. the explosion right is Washington. not there, which is why you got people like him thinking Dallas is going to be better than the Eagles. And I don't blame you, by the way. My point is, is that, you got a Deshaun Jackson. You got a Percy Harvin. There's a few other players in the past. I don't feel like bringing them up. And I'm not going to go where I really am tempted to go. But I will say this. Can't the brother just lead the team? Yeah. And go how, on? That's how it Does it, it be. always got to be anger management, well, locker room, you know, turmoil, uh, all of this? Uh, does it always have to be that way? It should, it because should. I, it, it just, management it, it, has to justify why would you let go of that player at this point in the season? The only way to justify it is, is to, to leak this information. Leak information. And I don't like the leak stuff. If you have something to say, just, you know what, hey, you know, this is what happened. I'm this just is saying, why we got I, I'm not even going there. All I'm asking you, Skip, and I'm not disagreeing with you, but you're as fair-minded as they come. Skip Bayless, look at the names and faces and look at the things that, that are said. And I, I have a problem that it's, it doesn't seem to be a problem when mm. people do these kind of things. I hear you. That, 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 that's all I want to say. You, go, you can't let the man just go? And look, sure. we're moving in a different direction. Right. I mean, you, you, you're gonna say, you got, you've got people on national television that are saying, Anger management issues. Really? It's pretty low. Well, yeah. It's pretty I wouldn't low. go there. Like I said, the, the locker room dynamics pretty are more low. important than whatever you can say about a guy. Let's just, if they didn't say anything, we would have been left to speculate. Yes, we would have. Okay. And this yes, here's, here's what shocked me. Pete Carroll has long had a reputation, dating back to USC days, mm -hmm. of handling difficult, high-strung, egotistical mm. personalities. We saw what happened with Lindale White the other day at the USC game yeah. where he got escorted off the sideline. Well, that was a player that he coached, and he coached extremely successfully mm -hmm. at USC. So I thought if any coach could figure out a difficult personality, and he has had some anger management dating back to high school. He got suspended twice for the conduct on the field where he got in a ref's face and mm -hmm. used abusive language, whatever. Whether it's anger management or not, he's had some incidents in his past. Yeah. Okay, we accept that. But couldn't Pete Carroll 
work around that? Could it, it surprised me that Pete Carroll said, I don't want to coach him anymore. But you know what happens when a player refuses to go back in a game? Usually the head coach says, I can't coach him anymore. Well, I, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. I support them yeah. making the move because right. of that. You can't refuse yeah. to go back in a game. You can't, you can't do that. And, and I think Pete is able to massage situations as long as that player is all about football. Yeah. With Eric Allen. Right. Always enlightening. We appreciate it. Um, let's leave it there. Coming up next, no Megatron, no problem for the Lions as they rally. Pat